Hello everyone, it's Tyler, and today we're going to take a look at uh, some redstone. And we're going to start off with some basic logic gates and a couple other things. Uh, some basically everything that you'll learn first, and then uh, continue like just make us be able to make some easy little little contraptions like locked doors and such. So right here we have an OR gate. Um, it's basically just uh, a single a single block that acts as like a, a center like receptor, I guess you could say, and it'll output any of these three inputs to here. So I could flip any of these levers, and the uh, the output will change. Uh, keep in mind that uh, an on torch uh, does not mean that the output is on. It means that it's off. The off torch would uh, show that the output is getting power. There you go. Alright, so here we have a NOR, NOR gate, which is essentially the same thing. You could have three different inputs going to this, but just for the sake of time, I kept it to one, so it's going to always show the opposite of your input. And uh, now a little more useful, we'll go to the AND gate, in which uh, both inputs have to be on in order for the output to be on. And let's just give you another look at that. There you go. All right, and this is a NAND gate, in which both have both outputs have to be off. In order, or um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let me see here. I'm trying to think of a better way to explain this. Yeah, only one. Yeah, one of the outputs has to be at least off, so that this gets power. Because there's no torch back here, so like only one torch has to be on to power. So there you go. There's your NAND gate, and it's always going to have the opposite, obviously. Okay, now let's go to something a little more useful. This is an RS NOR latch. It's um. A basic memory cell, and uh, basically, let's let's see, do I have this set up correctly? Yeah. So I'll flip this switch, and then I'll keep flipping it, and nothing will happen because it's stored in this line here. It acts as kind of memory, and uh, the output goes out to here, and this is on. Now I want this to go on. Flip it. Oh, whoops. I think I set this up wrong. Yeah, I did set it up wrong. Wait. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I shouldn't have set it up with buttons. I mean levers. I should have set it up with buttons. That would have made more sense, right? Here. I'll set it up with buttons real quick. Let's see. This will make it much easier. Okay. That one works, and okay. There you go. Now, this basically turns a button into a lever, um, kind of like a T flip flop, but you have to hit the other side to deactivate it. But that's just with this design. So it's basically just going to be a three by three square. Uh, two redstone, two redstone, torch and a torch. And uh, these two, uh, these two, I should say these four, but on each side the two redstone dust act as the, the little memory thing. So, uh, like I was saying before, you can reset it. So I went under here and I made a vertical torch stack, um, which is just one way of uh, transferring vertical power. And I can turn this on and then I want to reset it. Say I want to reset it. I just do that. You know, I should I shouldn't have used levers. Yeah. It does it it's more complicated because I put levers on, but that's just stupid of me. So here we have an implies gate and it basically this this acts as a lock. So when this powers it, when this powers this block this torch is off, and the input stays off. I mean, output stays off. 
but then, and, uh, I can flip this as much as I want, but it won't do anything. So I'll do this, and I'll unlock it, and I can do whatever I want. See? Okay, so like I was saying before, oh, actually, you know what? I'll show you one more thing before I show that. This is just a vertical inverter. It might look, it might look strange, but, um... This redstone powers this block, which powers this torch, and the torch in turn powers the block that's above it, which gives out power to this. So, I can flick this as much as I want, and, yep, let's see if I can get up here. Yeah, and it's always going to be the opposite. So that's what I'm using over here in my tileable RS Norlatch array. This is my favorite one to use. There is another one where it's just, well, it's only each... Nor latch is only one wide, but then uh, the outputs get all tangled up, and you don't like that. So let's do this here. Um, all the outputs are set to off, so these are all a version of an RS Nor latch. Um, I should give you a view over here. Um, no torch here. I always mess that up, but yeah, you get it. And there's just two redstone torch, two blocks <coughs> here, and then another torch. So let's. Turn all these outputs on. And then here is the reset bit. It's just this hooked up to a vertical inverter, which uh, is always in the inverted position. So it keeps these torches off so that they don't re interfere with this while I'm using the actual RS Norlatch input down there. And then I flip this, it toggles these torches up here, and then resets all the bits, or the RS Nor latches. Uh, so what that allows is that a lot, this um, this inverts that, that torch, which uh, turns this power line off, turning these torches on, and flipping the RS Nor latches back. So I'll just click these two. I can do this with a button over here, so you can see it. And then it'll do the same thing. Come on. There we go. There you go. I don't even know if it worked. <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention. Okay, so this is called a mono-stable circuit. Um, it might not, it might not uh, work because of so much lag uh, when I'm running my screen recording software, but basically what it does is it shortens the pulse of a button. So, watch that torch there. See? Much slower. I mean, much faster. <laughs> Let's time day so you can... Hmm. Okay, so these are a bunch of clocks. There seems to be a lighting glitch going on here. So, clocks are basically just uh, redstone repeaters linked up. You can You just set them all, you just power them all, and then uh, break the redstone. In between it and it makes generates a pulse so a steady pulse it just doesn't look steady because of lag hopefully this one will look a little more steady there you go and then you can link them all together and make really big ones that have lots of delay I believe that in ideal conditions uh, 10 ticks is equal to one second so each one of these is set to four ticks so this should be a couple seconds and you could do some really stupid things, like uh, make an arrow generator thing. All I had to do was set these to uh, each a different tick. This is one, two, three, and four ticks, and then the rest are all just one. So I start this clock, and it makes an arrow. There you go. Alright, so another thing you can do is you can link up the mono stable circuit and the uh, and the clock and you can make yourself a little clock starter there you go okay well I hope this was helpful to everyone uh, my next video should probably be a seven segment display maybe after that I'll do encoders and decoders but uh, that'll be in the future and so if you want to see those videos I'd appreciate it if you subscribed and this has been Tyler and I will see you guys 